Hi, my name is Fernando Rocha. Today we're here with Richard from Aficionado Channel and we're going to discuss about freshwater mollies and their purposes for our hobby in uh, saltwater. Okay, so water mollies. Mollies are very common fish used in uh, freshwater tanks. One thing that uh, most people don't know is that mollies actually come from brackish water. It's where fresh water and the ocean meets. Uh, anywhere there's a river that runs into the ocean. They're known to be from um, Mexico, west coast of Florida, Texas, the, you know, the whole Gulf, whatever there is a river that runs into the ocean, chances are you're going to find them in the wild. Uh, mollies are actually a pretty good hardy fish. They are uh, well known for eating algae. It's not that they eat a lot of algae, but they're constantly eating on algae, constantly picking and, you know, munching on the algae. Uh, for our purposes, the never-ending bottle of nuisance algae they're a great addition to the tank, not only because they're going to be you know, cleaning your frags, cleaning your corals, cleaning the glass, but they're actually, they don't lay eggs, they have fry. And when the female mollies deliver the, the live fry, they already come out swimming and ready to eat. Uh, so if you want to keep them, you have to separate them from the parents, or if you want to leave them in the tank, they actually become food for the bigger tanks or your own enemies. The process to make the fish from fresh water to salt water, it's very easy. It's just like acclimating the fish that you buy from your local store, you bring it home, you're going to drip acclimate. You're going to do exactly the same thing. Some people just throw the fish right into the water, hope to survive. I like to be a little more gentle with the fish, so I do a slow drip. Um, anywhere from six to four hours, depending on the salinity. You want to try to slowly bring the salinity up to what your reef is, and same thing with the temperature. So now let's go over some of the materials that I use to acclimate the fish. Okay, the things that we need, of course, we need the mollies. Uh, you can find them anywhere from a dollar and seventy-five cents, all the way up to now they're having designer mollies to like sixteen, eighteen dollars for a for a chocolate liar tail molly. But uh, today we just get like middle of the range, about five dollar mollies. They're selfie mollies. Uh, you need a bucket big enough to house the mollies. Uh, you need a line from your tank, just like when we drip a fish, a way to control the drip. I use one of the airline valves and. The refractometer so we can keep track of the salinity. When I started it was at a 100.1. Right now we are at 1.2. So slowly it's going and we want to get to the same salinity that we have in our fish tank. So we're trying to match 102.5. Where I got the mollies from, it's a store they keep them in brackish water. So depending where you're getting them from, they're either going to be full fresh water, they're going to be brackish water, or sometimes you get lucky and you get them already fully acclimated for salt. This should take us maybe in total from beginning to end, like I said, anywhere from three to four hours. So we're just gonna get this cooked, let it cook, and we'll come back and check on these guys and put them in the tank. Another thing to keep in mind if you do decide to keep mollies in your tank is um, behavioral wise, mollies are kind of like grasses. You need to have an average of three to four females for one male. Uh, males are known on their aggressiveness and willingness to mate that they will actually stress the female to the point of killing them. Another important thing is uh, whenever you do get your mollies is uh, you want to sex the mollies properly. Uh, mollies are fairly easy to di differentiate from males to females. Uh, males have a more elongated body. Their um, females have a more of a round shape to it. The pelvic fins. The female is more of a fan shape 
of the fin. The male has got more of a, kind of like a stick, and that's what he actually uses to hook himself onto the female to deposit the sperm. Another thing that you want to do, you want to have another bucket handy. That way, if, uh, once you have enough water in there and you're not at the right salinity, dump three quarters of the water out. That way you give room for more water to come in until you reach the point that we need to be. We've done this three times. Hopefully this is the last time. Let's see where we are now. Looks like we're there. Let's compare with the tank. I know I'm supposed to clean the lens, but we're doing this kind of fast. 1.25, I think we're, we're right on. So we're, we're gonna introduce the mollies into the tank. Get yourself a nice little net. You know, I try to keep my hands out of the tank and I don't want to dump any of this water into my tank because I know there is some of the fish stores uh, brackish water and I don't know that water. I don't trust it. So we'll just grab the mollies. And off we go. Another thing, usually after the first three to four days of you introducing the mollies in the tank, there's a stress level from going from fresh water or brackish water into salt water. And that's actually going to induce some of the females to drop their babies, the ones that are close to that uh, gestational period. And uh, keep an eye on it if you want to keep the babies, you know, separate them from, from the tank, or you can leave them in there and there'll be more food for the, for the fish. Again, my name is Fernando Rocha. I want to thank Richard for the time and gave me the opportunity to talk to you guys about freshwater mollies. It's a cheap and effective way to keep your tank clean and some of your finicky eating fish fed.